Why did I make her ready a bigger pudding? I forgot already how my cousin Simon likes my noodle pudding. He had two portions already. That's the spray powder crust. And that's all. Where are the aspens, Ma? Who has a head already? Cousin Simon has a headache. Oh, my gracious. Look in my chest for the aspen, Samuel, dear. Maybe he shouldn't have any more pudding. Molly. Will you please come in already and sit on the table? Your cousin Simon's conversation is getting beyond my endurance. Jake, you promise. That's why I want you to come in and relieve me of the burden of being a host before I forget my promise. Jake, why? Why is it every time my cousin Simon comes to the house? How many times has he invited you to his house? What's the matter? Would it embarrass him to have his butler meet his poor relations? And how are you talking too loud? Cousin Simon wants more self in the refrigerator. If I was a man that treated his family the way Simon treats his, I wouldn't have the effrontery to call up and say I'm coming. All right, but he's here already. So what harm would be it and what a miss would it be if you would tell him the things are not so good and you need work in the factory? Ah, oh, no. Not me. He knows the predicament I'm in. He reads the women's wear. He knows I'm standing with idle machines, that business isn't so good with me at the moment. If he was a cousin like I would be a cousin. Molly, well, I'm waiting for the pudding. Who does he think he is? Everybody's who they think they are and who you think they are and what they are and what they hope to be and also what they hope they could be. Thank you, Mrs. Shakespeare. You're very welcome. Have a headache, Simon? A little. Oh, sorry to hear that. Here, dear, I just have a little crust of the pudding left. Oh. Well, right. <laughs> so, tell me, Simon, when will your family be back from their cruise? Do I know? Uh, the bread, please. The bread. Simon, why didn't you take a vacation? Me? Me a vacation? <laughs> Pass me the salt. salt. You have to have a talent for leisure, David. I would have that talent. You only think you would. No, I would. Uh, the pickles. Yes, pickles. Well, for example, tell me, what would you do? Well, seems to me I would sit down and make a list of all the relatives I couldn't see when I was too busy to see them. So who should I see? Tante Elke? Cousin Mottle? Sarah, Saul? Why not? Why not? Poor relations are a liability. How are they getting along? Struggling. Struggling? Well, of course. And well, what's the wonder? They never wanted any more than they have, so they have nothing. How is Sarah's son? Max? A two-family house that's hanging on four mortgages. Sure. He had to have a house that he couldn't afford. And Muttle? Muttle don't ask. A soda water stand with a telephone booth. Why didn't he take a job? He was lazy. Sure, it's much easier to sit there and sell for a penny plain. He had to be a businessman, a new jack. You had to continue struggling year in and year out in the dress business? What do you mean? A uh, little Simon. What do you mean? Well, if I can take talk a, plainly, take, take a uh, let Simon. Simon talk plainly. What are you trying to say, that I'm not a businessman? Jake. You are a first-class cutter, Jake. Everybody in the trade knows that. Simon, now that we're talking plainly, may I also indulge? Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Only stir up your memory, Simon. Where would you be if I the family had I am a self-made man, Jake. Nobody in this world is self-made. Jake. Nobody. I remember a little further back than Jake remembers. Your Uncle Sal wasn't so lazy when he took money out of the bank to help you, Simon. And if your remembrance is not too short, Tante Elga and her children and Mottle and Joe, may he rest where he is, when it came to help you when you needed help, they put you into business with four machines. Absolutely. And if we're talking already, let's talk. By who did you stay when you had no place to live? Tante, Tante Elga. Elga. And if we're talking, so let's talk. Ah, uh, what's the use talking? I could talk from today till tomorrow and still wouldn't be ready for a period. Anything I ever got from my relations was returned with interest. <laughs> oh, the wrong kind of interest. Maybe if you would listen... If we're well, eating, let's eat already, please. Oh. What oh. is it, Simon? Uh, uh, get a little bicarbonate soda. Simon! Bicarbonate! Uh, uh, Simon. Uh, Simon. Simon, what's the matter? Here, sit down. Warm. Simon. Warm. Yeah. Uh, Open a window, somebody don't stand. What's the medicine? Simon, uh, Simon, uh, Simon uh, go across the street to Dr. Stark uh, and bring him over right away. What? The first pneumonia, the smelling salt. Uh, smelling salt. Ma, wouldn't I do? Pickles, honey, shoes. Simon, darling, please. Well, what is it? Don't call me. Jake. Smelling salt, please. That's two salt. Jake. Here, smelling salt. Smelling salt. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Open Simon's belt. Inhale. Simon's belt. Dear cousin, exhale. Inhale. There he is, Doctor. 
Why, Doctor dear, yeah. why, I'm glad you're here. We were just sitting quietly, and all of a sudden, oh, a collapse. Do something, Doctor. Oh. No, just let me open your shirt. Oh, don't sit up. Uh, Rosalie. Sit, sit back. It's like my son Sally's stethoscope. Uh, Doctor, dear, would you like us to remove ourselves? Uh, yes, yes, please. David, David, stop cluttering and clattering with the dishes now. We're only trying to clean the table, Ma. Ma, please, don't go to pieces. Don't talk to me backwards and forwards when I'm going through a crisis, Sammy. Come on, Rosie. We'll be upstairs if you want anything, Ma. Molly, change your face. You didn't hear the diagnosis yet. You want me to give you my diagnosis? Well? Good it don't look. That's my diagnosis. You had three portions of noodle pudding, no wonder. Oh, it should only be nothing. Mm. Nothing it isn't. To say that I ever loved Simon, I never did. But I never hated him either. Oh, it should only be well. Mm. Uh, Mr. Goldberg. Well, well doctor, doctor, What is it, Doctor? Uh, uh, could I use your telephone? Of course, course, surely. Thank you. What is your diagnosis, Doctor? Well, I suspect that this may be a functional disturbance, but I can't be absolutely sure until I perform some tests. Oh, tests? No tests is a natural... natural. Well, one thing is certain. I don't want him moved. Oh, you... Simon. Uh, this is Dr. Stark. Uh, Miss Atkinson, call the registry and get a couple of nurses, a day nurse and a night nurse. Molly. That's right. Jake. Yes. Jake. Jake. Mm -hmm. Jake. Jake, if he's ordering two nurses, he's not telling us. Jake, I can read between the syllables. Simon? Simon, the doctor said you're only functional. Uh, a little water, please, Molly. Uh, yes, I'll get it. No, Molly, Jake, don't leave me. We won't, Simon. We won't. David! Uh, a little border, please. All right. Uh, not Miss Lynch for this case, no. Doctor, is it all right if the patient has some water? Oh, of course. I only ask because in intestinal cases, my Sally, the doctor, never allows water. Oh, well, that's all right. He can have all the water he wants. A uh, who? Miss Ellis. Well, I thought she was on the Gerald case. Oh. Well, uh, all right, send Miss Ellis over then. Yes, the two nurses, that's what he wants. Well, he could get along with one, but he's the nervous type. Drink quietly, quietly. Uh, more water, please. More water. More. Any messages? Oh, well, well read me Mr. Blish's report, please. Mark, access deviation. Oh, he's in failure. He hasn't too long. Yes, he sounds like a pretty sick man. Not good. I, uh, I think the family should be notified. Well, maybe, uh, two or three days. You never know. Molly. Just close your eyes, Ashes, darling. I'll be right back. What is it? Just heard the doctor. What? Simon is a failure. Well, what do you mean, failure? It's an occlusion of the descending branch. What? What does that mean? Be prepared, Molly. Be prepared to what? The worst. Absolutely the worst. Doctor. I'll be back with my portable cardiograph machine. Uh, doctor, dear, tell us what it is. No matter what it is. Well, I will, Mrs. Goldberg, just as soon as I get the reports. But, Doctor, do you see, I want... Uh, in the meantime, there's nothing you can do except uh, just keep him comfortable. I'll be back shortly. Mm. Molly, please. Where there's life, there's hope. Listen, Sally, the doctor said it, and I heard him with both ears. So let me talk to Sally. Molly, please. The occlusion of the descending branch with large area of muscle involved. Well, of course he said it. He said it and I heard it. But excess deviation. <laughs> so, please, will Sally come for a consultation, maybe? Sally, would you come for consultation, please? 
Huh? What, huh? Is that what you think? Hmm? All right. Uh, I'll keep you toasted. Goodbye, Sally. Sally's coming? No. Why, David? Don't ask me why, Molly. If there was something he could do, he would come. Jake. Molly, listen to me. Call Simon's family and let them come home at once. Call them? Where am I going to call them? They're on a boat on some ocean. Call them. Well, I'll get dressed. I'd better call my office and tell them I wouldn't be in today. Don't do that, Jake. See how a person's only a fly? A fly, not more. Where can I find some towels, please? Oh, morning, Miss Ellis. Morning. David, dear, get the noise some towels. Towels? Right away, please. Yes, and some more ice, please. Some more ice. Oh, my nice cubes are vacant. Good morning, nice. Uncle Ben. Good morning, Rosalie. Rosalie, Rosalie darling, run across the street to Miss Carey. Maybe she can fill me up. Please. Right, You're right. taking the cup. Did you uh, call the telephone company to see that they had that bell softened? Yes, everything is attended to. I'm having all the buzzers softened. It'll be attended to. Well, I hope so. Yes. Oh, and be sure there's no unnecessary noise down here. Yes, I'll tend to that also. I'm sorry. Did you uh, attend to the cot for the night nurse? Uh, the cot? Yes, I'm expecting it any moment. Oh, that's a very sharp bill. Oh, I'm sorry, very sharp. One second, one minute. Oh, you got the drugstore? Fine. Here are the things, Miss Thank you. Come with me. Here are the towels, please. Thank you. Come. Lower, please. David, on a lower register vocally. It's the cut, Molly. Put it right over here, please. Take it upstairs, please. Please, please. No admittance without permission, David. Nurse. You. Yes, Miss Goldberg. The night nurse is here. The night nurse? I, I mean, the cut. Oh, uh, up here, my man. Uh, up here, my man. V very gently, please. Look out for my carpet. Here are the ice cubes, oh. ma'am. So tiptoe up very gently, please. Oh. Where are you going, Sam? I forgot the rubbing alcohol. Slam the door quietly. Hi, oh, David. Say how a person don't live forever. Oh, I'm shaking like a leaf. Oh, a dead man is laying sick and no consideration. Molly. Simon wants to talk to us. Shadow, life is just a day. A day can be life too, Simon. Molly, I always wanted the wrong things. Now that it's too late, I know. Uh, the things that I might have done, that I should have done. Why did I turn my back on my own flesh and blood? Tante Elke, cousin Muttle. Sarah, Saul, did Jake have to struggle so much when I could have made life so much easier for him? Molly, before I close my eyes, my whole family and their family will know that they once had a cousin Simon. Uh, Molly, call my lawyer. I have to talk to him. Simon, you'll get well. If I get well, it will be a different son. Jake, where is my dear cousin Jake? He, here I am, Simon. Jake. Jake, as long as you live, you'll never have anything to worry about. Though I need strangers to reap what I sowed. 
You will be in complete charge of my factory, Jake. Tante Elke, she'll never have to worry for the rest of her life. So lethal. Uh, only let me get well, uh, Jake. Only let me get well. You will be my right hand. All I want to live to see is my family enjoying the fruits of my labor. That's all. Just to see my dear family. Well, he's not an easy patient, Doctor, and he watches the clock. Thank you, Doctor. Morning, Miss Sellers. Uh, good morning, Miss Goldberg. Well, what's the doctor's prognosis? As soon as he gets here, we'll know. Thank you. Good morning, Miss Sellers. Good morning, Mr. Goldberg. Well, Molly? When the doctor gets here, we'll get the report. It's not Vula's <clears throat> house, Molly. We know the report. Well, there's life, there's hope, David. See how it takes a crisis to make a man? He was always a man. If not, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing now for the family. But Aunt Elsie's giving a hundred dollars a month for life. Muttley's getting a cigar stand in the garment center. And Saul and Max, don't ask what he's doing for the whole family. And you, Jake, you're going to be his right hand. Let him only get well. I'm only sorry for all the years we didn't understand him. And don't think, Molly, darling, that this hasn't been an awakening for me also. I'm glad, darling. So go, dear. Go to the station. You've got to meet Miss Springer, Simon's secretary. I I'm going, Molly. Go down. David. Another branch off the family tree. <laughs> Come, Miss Springer. I'll knock first because it's very critical. The Simon's secretary is here. Can she come in? Yes, he's expected. Hello, Mr. Simon. Come in, Debbie. Come in. Sit down. Tell me, did you uh, make out all the checks I asked you to make out? I have everything here, Mr. Good. Simon. Are you well enough to sign them? With my last strength, I'll sign them. Debbie, if anything happens to me, I want my dear cousin Jake to have power of attorney. Don't go, Molly. Don't go. I want you to see with your own eyes. Show my dear cousin the checks. Tante Elke. Cousin Muttle, that's for the cigar stand. Only get Max. well, Simon. Only get well. And for you, Debbie, for your loyalty, your devotion, how many years have you been working for me? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Double your salary, Debbie. Double your salary starting next week. Oh, Mr. Simon, thank you. Oh, you have no idea what this is going to mean to me. Tell me, Debbie. I would like to know what this means to you. Let me hear. Let me have that pleasure. Tell me. Well, you see, a girl who has no husband to support her has to think about her future. I'll be able to save a little. Every birthday won't seem like a nightmare. Oh, there are so many things that people in your circumstances can't understand, Mr. Simon. Get me a pen, Debbie. Molly, call up my relatives. I want to see them once again. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's splendid. Yes, yes, I'll tell him. Well, thank you. Mrs. Goldberg, yes. I have good news for you. Yes? The cardiograph is negative. Oh, negative. It's wonderful. Jake! David! Yeah, yeah. Wonderful news. Well. The cardiograph says it's negative. No, no. Negative? Yes, there's no injury and no thrombosis. No thrombosis? There's nothing wrong with your heart. I knew it. I'm not a doctor, but I knew there was nothing wrong with my heart. Why? For what reason should I have a heart attack? I'm not a doctor, but I knew... Now, Mr. Simon, please, there's still the blood count, and don't forget about your gallbladder. Now, my heart is right. Yes, but you may still require surgery, Mr. Simon. What's a knife compared to a heart? 
Tell my cousins the good news. Oh, they already know. I'll be back in a moment, Miss Bremer. And now about these checks, Mr. Simon. Well, good news can also be fatiguing. I'll take a look at those checks again. Hundred dollars a month, a lot of money. Just figure out how much money a man has got to have in the bank to get an income of a hundred dollars a month at the present rate of interest. Oh, Simon, we're so happy. If it's negative <laughs> and if it's no thrombosis. And I, I tried to get Tante Elk on the telephone, so she'll tell the whole family to come, but the line was busy. Nice. You don't think I ought to have any visitors? Oh, I think you can have a few visitors if they don't stay too long. Well, perhaps we'd better wait to see what the doctor says. I feel fatigued. I think I'll rest until the doctor comes. Well, the rest, Simon, dear, rest. 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 I'll rest. How's the patient today? Well, it seems to me, doctor, you should have known without a cardiograph that I had no heart. Well, in these matters, we like to be sure. Well, how that about the hemoglobin? No surgery is indicated. I don't have to be operated on? No. There's nothing wrong with your gallbladder, Mr. Simon. But you said it was infected. Well, we did suspect a stone of the ampulla, but uh, well, that what, proved... what did I have? Well, you see. Well, what when... was it? A severe case of gastroenteritis, which caused a formation. Please, of... doctor, in plain English. Mr. Simon, you overate. Overate? Well, what am I doing in bed? What I need is a long vacation. Well, that's a good idea. A little vacation never hurt anybody. Well, I'll see you this afternoon. You won't see me this afternoon. I won't be in Haverville. <laughs> All right. Good day, Miss Springer. Good day, Doctor. I'm so happy, Mr. Simon. Miss Springer, I think you'd better get the next train back to New York. Yes, sir. And now, Mr. Simon, if you'll just sign these checks to your relations, I can mail them. Well, checks? Well, what's the hurry about checks? I'm not dead yet. Oh, and Mr. Simon, since you're thinking of taking a vacation, that matter of my increase... Your increase starts January 1st, $5 a week. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get dressed. Uh, operator, how long can the line be busy? My Sally, the doctor would have known it was not thrombosis. By his complexion, he would have known. <laughs> Hello, Tanta. Me. Tanta, Simon hasn't got a heart. It's not a thrombosis. Isn't that wonderful? And Tanta, darling, I didn't want to tell you yesterday, but I want you to listen to me, and I want you to tell the whole family that they'll remember they had a cousin Simon. Don't ask me. Don't ask me any questions. Just suffice it. Suffice it that it's wonderful news. All right, darling. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Why didn't you tell her what Simon is going to do for the family? Because I want Simon to tell them himself. Oh, Jake, darling. Simon's right hand you're going to be. He won't be sorry. Oh. The confidence he has in me will be repaid. Oh, Jake, darling. And at long last, can't tell to have a little comfort in her old age. And Saul and Sarah and the whole family, their last years will be bright. Molly, maybe you'll fix a sneak snake for Simon. Oh, you have to ask me, of course. See, so the coronary pectoris is non avoid. You see what a gastrocosmo can do to a poison? Oh, well, Simon, it's good to see How you. How do you feel, Simon? A vacation, and I'll be like new. Take a long vacation and forget everything. I'll look after your interests. You know that, Simon. I know that, Jake. Uh, but it just occurred to me that uh, the dress business being what it is, uh, it might not be a bad idea to sit out the next season or two uh, until things change. Yeah, but, Simon, you said that... Well, we'll talk about that when I get back. I don't want to miss my train. Simon, do you snack? No, thank you. Never again. You and your snack almost killed me. You realize that? You almost killed me. You have to be a little more careful how you feed your guests, even if he is a relation. Well, Mrs. Shakespeare, when it comes to your relatives, where there's life, there's no hope.